Today, I will show you how to retrieve some ID-specific information from a SQL Server database using Entity Framework Core. Not only that, but we'll make sure to show it in its own Razor component. So, let's get started. Hey, what is up, wonderful human beings? I truly hope everyone is doing okay. I'm Julian, and on this channel, I'm posting focused web development tutorials and discussions. If you do like this video, make sure you hit the like button so that this tutorial spreads out to as many people as possible. And if you enjoy content like this and you want this two times a week, make sure you hit the subscribe button and the notification bell to get notified every time I post something. Today is the fourth video in the Blazor Tutorials uh, series, and if you didn't see the first three already, please make sure to go ahead and see them. I'm going to post them uh, somewhere on the screen. However, if you don't want to do that, that's fine as well. Uh, we've got the code already in the description. Go ahead and GitHub. It's completely free. Uh, download it and then everything done so far is in the before folder. So you're up to speed to everything that we've done so far. Today, we'll retrieve some ID specific information from our SQL Server database using Entity Framework Core. We'll create our own uh, recipe details page, raise a component more specifically. Uh, um, and on page load, we'll uh, render all that data from the database um, on the page. So let's get coding. Okay, so the first thing that we're going to need to do is to create a new recipe details razor component. Uh, so if we head over to our solution uh, and uh, go ahead and uh, expand the um, uh, recipe manager project, and then the pages, and then the recipe uh, folder, and then right click on the recipe folder, add um, a new folder, uh, sorry, not new folder, new uh, Razor component. I'm just going to go ahead and delete this. Um, new Razor component and call this recipe details. Uh, you can also call this recipe edit. Um, but I'm just going to leave it, or you can call it anything you want, basically. Uh, okay, and then the next thing would be to add a page directive. Um, Okay, so this would be done at the top of the page with an add sign at the beginning. So if you remember from the previous video, we did the same for the recipe list page. Uh, so page and then double quotes, and we're gonna give this a root of recipe and then open and close curly braces ID with a type of integer. Um, okay, so what this is saying is uh, from the home, uh, from uh, the root um, of our uh, web app, then slash recipe slash um, and then the ID of the recipe, and we've enforced the ID of the recipe to be an integer. Um, okay, the next thing that we'll have to do is uh, basically let's just uh, quickly add this uh, parameter here because to be able to add a um, um, and use a parameter within a component, uh, we need to actually define it as a parameter uh, inside the code block. So to do that, we'll uh, use the parameter uh, attribute on top of our property. So we'll put this as a nullable int and you'll see why uh, in a moment. Um, so the reason why uh, I'm putting this as a nullable int is because uh, we are planning to redirect this page when we're gonna create a new recipe. Um, at which point the ID of the recipe will be no. Okay, um, then the next thing to do is to add a few usings. So we're going to uh, need to use the um, recipe model. Uh, so we're going to do using data access dot models. And then uh, we'll need to use the recipe service as well. So uh, using services. Um, so let's just quickly inject that service in there. So uh, we can do that by doing inject and then I recipe service recipe service. If you don't know what this is, please uh, go back and uh, see the previous uh, videos. But long and short, uh, we have created an I recipe service. This is the uh, uh, interface, and then we define that uh, with a few CRUD methods. Um, which are here. So create, delete, get, list, and update. In the previous video, we've uh, done the uh, recipes list, and then in this video, we'll do the uh, get method. Um, okay. So now that we have done this, uh, what I'm going to do is uh, declare an empty recipe when the page loads. 
Um, so to do that, we're just gonna make it public, uptype recipe, we'll call it recipe, uppercase, uh, and then we'll new it up with an empty recipe. Oops. Cool, that's it. And then on initialized async uh, is a method provided by Blazor that we can override when the page um, basically initializes. So to do that, we do private override. And as soon as we type space, um, it's supposed to open up the um, IntelliSense. Uh, sorry, no, not private, it's actually protected. That's why the IntelliSense. Uh, didn't trigger overwrite and then space and then we've got a bunch of methods uh, so I'm just gonna choose on initialized async um, so I tab that uh, in order to have this snippet generated for me okay so I'm gonna make this asynchronous uh, otherwise it will error uh, and then I will define the recipe actually I think it's best if we uh, check if the uh, ID um, has a value so ID is not null and if it's not null it means that we've redirected to this page with a recipe id so we want to see a recipe and we can just define or redefine better yet uh, the recipe with um, the recipe gotten from the recipe service so as this is as simple as recipe service dot get and we can pass in the ID. However, this is not going to accept it because it can't um, convert from uh, int, from nullable int to integer. But as soon as we are in here, we've already checked that this ID is not null. So we're just going to put a value. Just make sure that you check before doing this, that you check that the actual value that you're trying to get is not no otherwise this will throw an exception the next step is to uh, get the to modify the uh, get method inside the recipe service to actually return a recipe uh, and to do that is extremely simple so we can just type in return and we can get the same sort of logic as we've done in the in the list method so that will be db dot recipes dot and let's say find. There are multiple ways of doing this, but I'm just gonna go with the simplest, uh, simplest way. So what this find does is gets the um, uh, a primary key, so finds an element by its primary key. Um, and if those two types match, uh, then uh, it, will, uh, it will return it. So if I go in the definition of the recipe, uh, here you can, as you can see, the ID is usually, it doesn't need any annotation because by default in Entity Framework Core, ID is considered as a primary key. So for that reason, uh, being an integer, all I need to do to find that element, to find that record, is put dot .find um, and pass in the, uh, the primary key value. And that is it for this particular step. The next step is to actually show some uh, details uh, pertaining to our recipe. And to do that, instead of this recipe details uh, heading, we can actually put the recipe title. So at this point, we know for sure that, uh, at least for the purposes of this tutorial, we know for sure that we've got uh, a recipe. Uh, or let's just pretend that we have a recipe. So uh, to access this particular, um, uh, to, to access the, uh, our, our uh, public uh, variable here, then what we need to do is put an uh, add sign and type in recipe and then dot and obviously I'm just going to put the title. Um, then underneath let's um, uh, render the description. So to do that let's just put um, um, what this actually represents. So description and then after it a paragraph uh, to show the recipe description in exactly the same way. So by doing the add sign and then the variable name um, and then a dot, we can access its property. So it's very, very simple. And then the date created, date created. So this will be dot date created, the same way with date updated. Um, cool, and that is it with this step. Okay, for our uh, final step, what we need to do is redirect from the 
recipes list page to the recipe details. And that is very, very simple because in the previous tutorial, we've actually uh, laid the foundation to do this. So for those of you who don't know, uh, we've uh, added a bootstrap table and then for each row, we looked up over uh, our list of recipes, which is just three recipes from the database. And then for each recipe, we add a new row. And then for um, on each row, we've added a non-click event to that calls the redirect to method. So if we go in this method, we've actually don't we actually don't navigate uh, anywhere. But what we want to do is pass in the recipe ID and the root to go exactly to that recipe details page. So to do that, let's just go ahead and uh, make sure that we actually get the page directive, the correct uh, page route. And then in here. Um, what we need to pass in is the actual ID of the recipe. So recipe ID. And in front of this string, I'm just going to put a dollar sign so that uh, C sharp knows that this is a, this is a variable. That's how you can interpolate um, uh, variables inside strings uh, very easily, by the way. Okay, cool. Uh, so uh, yeah, in theory, that is pretty much it. So to run the app, I'm just going to go in the package manager console. If you can't see it, then go ahead and search for it in here, package manager console. Uh, and then I will put .NET, I will type in .NET watch run. That's it. And then hit enter. Uh, by the way, make sure that you actually save this before running it. Otherwise, you won't see any change. So getting back to our, to our uh, application, if we uh, head over to the recipes list, um, then if we uh, click on a row, we get redirected to that particular recipes page. So that's quite cool, right? Uh, we've got the title, we've got the description that it's specific to our uh, to our records, they created and they updated. And then if we go back, uh, let's just see the pizza recipe, and then we go back, let's just see the lasagna recipe, and so on. So as you can see, the route changes. So if we type in here, one, we head over to the burger recipe, two, pizza, three, lasagna, and so on. So that's it guys for today's tutorial. If you enjoyed it, uh, then why not hit the like button and uh, if you uh, like content like this, hit subscribe and hit the notification bell so that you get notified every time I uh, upload a new video. If you've got any questions or suggestions, please make sure that you add them in the comment sections below and I'll make sure to respond to every single one of them. Thank you very much for watching, I do appreciate your time and until next time, stay safe.